Yep, the day has finally arrived where we have to say goodbye to Windows 10. Because after a little over a decade since its release, Microsoft is ending support for it. And whenever this happens with a Windows version, I usually like to take a retrospective look back at the operating system to explore how it's changed over the years. Except, we're not going to do that today. Because this OS still holds an impressive 40.5% of Windows version market share which is more than XP and 7 had around their end of support dates. So if you're like me and are still using Windows 10 today, where do you go from here? Well, of course, you gotta upgrade to Windows 11, and if your computer doesn't support Windows 11, you better buy a new machine because, oh my gosh, you can't stay on Windows 10, you're gonna get so many viruses and malware, and yeah, this happens every single time support ends for a Windows version. Microsoft really wants to push you to update. I'm sure you've seen the pop-ups and the news articles talking about how easy it is to upgrade to Windows 11, if you have a supported computer, of course. Now look, I'm personally not the biggest fan of Windows 11, with some of its utterly stupid UI changes and the fact that Microsoft continually makes it more and more difficult just to use a local account. But the fact of the matter is, this is probably your best route if you want to stay in the Windows ecosystem, because there will be a time when some of your favorite applications will drop support for Windows 10 too. However, if you try to go through with the free update, you might see a message telling you that your computer doesn't meet the minimum system requirements, even if it seems like it does. Now, this has been talked about ad nauseum, but when Microsoft launched Windows 11, they implemented what I like to call soft hardware requirements, the most discussed being TPM 2.0 and Secure Boot. But the frustrating thing is, even if your computer supports both of these things, the installer could still tell you that you're using an incompatible system. Because, as it turns out, the real soft hardware requirement is the list of compatible processors that your CPU has to be on to be able to get through the update. And here I was thinking this whole time that my KB Lake i7 system didn't have these security features. Turns out, I just had them disabled, but even after turning them on in the BIOS, the updater still tells me that my system is unsupported, because, sure enough, my CPU isn't on the supported list. And this, of course, is easily the most frustrating thing about Windows 11, especially considering that there are ways to completely bypass this error, which is something we've done on this channel literally every time we've installed the OS. The easiest way is to use a USB creation tool called Rufus, which has an option to modify the installer image to bypass these checks. And then you'll be able to get through the setup just fine. Only thing is, whenever Microsoft pushes out a new release of Windows 11, which they tend to do once per year, it's not going to show up in Windows Update no matter how many times you refresh, so you'll have to manually install it yourself. With 25H2, which just came out last month, it's actually pretty easy if you're running last year's release because you just have to download an enablement package. But there are other methods if that doesn't work. And in my experience, using Windows 11 on an unsupported system is fine as long as you meet all the other hardware requirements like RAM and CPU speed. Otherwise, it'll just be unbearable to use. Of course, there's always the option of upgrading your PC or just building a new one entirely, and today's video sponsor Micro Center can help you out with that, because they've got great deals on processors, memory, motherboards, and so much more all October long. They're also offering huge discounts on their PowerSpec pre-built PCs, all of which come pre-installed with Windows 11, so you don't even have to think about this whole end of support nonsense. At least for now. It's probably no surprise that Micro Center is one of my favorite places to spend money because it's literally a grocery store, but for electronics. They have just about anything you can think of, from PC parts to 3D printers to networking equipment, even Magic the Gathering cards, we're just going to move right on past that. And with their news feed, you can always keep up with what sales are currently going on, both online and in their 29 retail locations. Which is about to bump up this year because they're opening a brand new store in Phoenix, Arizona. And if you live nearby, you can sign up to get a free 128GB flash drive when the store opens. So click the links down below to check them out, and huge thanks again to Micro Center for making this video possible. But what if you don't want to build a new PC? And what if you don't really care about how good the operating system you're using is? Well, you could just switch to Linux. 
Oh boy, I can already hear the angry mob coming. Look, I, I know that I make my fair share of snarky remarks about Linux users on this channel, but the truth is I really like Linux and I think it's a fantastic platform. It's my go-to operating system to install on any secondary computer like this Dell Optiplex that I use in my garage. And if all you do on your computer is browse the web, check email, write documents, that sort of thing, you will probably have a pretty easy transition. The only place where you'll run into trouble is if you currently rely on a lot of Windows only software, which has always been the major hurdle for most people looking to make the switch. Now there have been some major strides in this area in recent years with Proton opening up a whole bunch of Windows games to the platform. However, I personally don't think it's a good idea to switch to Linux with the mindset that you're going to be able to do everything just like you did on Windows. Depending on what distro you choose, there can be a significant learning curve to get used to the new user interface, and you should be open to the idea of switching to other Linux native programs to replace some of your Windows ones. So if you're looking to go this route, I would highly recommend installing a Linux distro like Mint or Ubuntu in a virtual machine and try out some alternatives to the programs you rely on, as well as testing the Windows software that you absolutely can't live without through Wine or Proton. But if you ultimately decide that you can't make the leap and don't want to mess around with unofficially installing Windows 11 on your system, what can you do? Well, there is a little band-aid solution called the Extended Security Update Program, which will give you security-only updates for an additional year until October 13th, 2026. Extended updates are something Microsoft has done in the past for other out-of-support Windows releases, but this is the first time that they've made it available to consumers. And boy, have they decided to implement it in a really strange way. Or three ways, I should say, because getting access to these updates requires you to either pay $30, redeem 1,000 Microsoft reward points if you use Bing for some reason, or sync your PC settings with a Microsoft account. The latter of which is by far the easiest, but of course raise concerns about Microsoft once again trying to force people to move away from a local account. However, as Theo Joe pointed out in this recent video, you are able to sign your system out of the account immediately after enrolling, and Windows Update will still show that you're getting the extended support. This is the route that I went, but it may not be a permanent enrollment because I found a page on Microsoft's website that says if you're signed out of your Microsoft account for up to 60 days, you will have to go through the enrollment process again to be eligible for the updates. But the interesting thing is this line only appears if you have your location set to a country within the European economic area. On the US version of the site, they make no mention of it, so I'm not sure if they just haven't updated this yet, but I'm really hoping this doesn't end up being the case because that's going to get pretty annoying. Now there is a way to get official support even after 2026 arrives, but it requires switching to a specialized version of Windows 10 called LTSC, or the Long Term Servicing Channel. This route is what I like to call the POS Ready solution because it does basically the same thing that OS did back when XP's support ended. It provides you several more years of support, up to 2032 in this case, but at the cost of running a system that isn't meant for consumer hardware. We'll probably talk a bit more about this in another video. Of course, your last option is to just do nothing. And many people will do nothing, just like when XP and Vista and 7 and 8 and 8.1 went out of support years ago. Because no matter how much Microsoft tries to pry these OSs away from us, there will always be holdouts that refuse to update, regardless of the security concerns, because from their perspective, everything still works like it did before. And everything will continue to work on Windows 10, even when we reach its really seriously out of support date, but it won't last long, because app developers will eventually stop releasing versions of their software for Windows 10, as its market share is probably going to see a steady decline from that point on. Because at the end of the day, just like the Windows versions from yesteryear, it was never meant to last forever. Even if that one Microsoft employee said that it was. Thank you all very much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video.